Welcome to the pod bay door. Hello out there in the verse. This is the pod bay door. Please join us every Tuesday for informed discussions on new and upcoming movies, games, and tech. And if you love Las Vegas, stay tuned because as Vegas insiders, we can give you a unique perspective on its history, provide insider information, and reveal the unknown secrets of our town, Vegas. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. We're glad you're with us. And hey, if you get the chance, subscribe to us and give us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Also, check in with us on our YouTube channel at the Pot Bay Door Podcast. I don't care if the sun don't shine. I do my drinking in the evening time when I'm in Las Vegas. Hello to you. This is the podbaydoor.com. You can catch us on the podbaydoor.com or check with us on any one of your favorite podcasting apps, including Podbean, iTunes, and SoundCloud. Uh, you can also check with our newest blog and enhanced uh, download area at uh, the podbaydoor.wordpress.com or check our .com and click on that big W and you go right there. Uh, coming up on this episode... Uh, living in Las Vegas. Uh, listener questions uh, from a panel who has lived here a seemingly a very long time. We're going to talk about the hospitality industry, the gaming industry, the club industry, and a couple of interesting Area 52 topics at the very end. This is Jamie, and joining me today is uh, John and Julia. How are you doing, guys? Hello. Hello. John and Julia have both been on the panel before uh, in, uh, within their separate uh, disciplines. John is a linguist and a teacher, and Julia as an author. But today they are here uh, primarily as my friends, but uh, also they uh, were with me through thick and thin in, uh, in working within the Las Vegas uh, industries. In fact, um, I, uh, I think, Julia, uh, you've been the longest, right? You were, you were before John and I were in the industry. You were working... Yep, I started at the Sands in 94. 94, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, all right. Sands to Hard Rock. I did a little bit at the Stardust as an intern, and then I did um, the Rio, the Venetian, the Wynn, and wow. then I said to hell with it. Wow. Yeah. See it? Wow. Enough's enough. Enough's <laughs> enough. Enough's <laughs> enough. <laughs> But uh, 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 they are both going to help me with uh, uh, listener questions today. I, I gathered up all the questions that we have. Uh, we're going to move away from superheroes and talk about our favorite place, Las Vegas, today. So all these questions are going to be involving Las Vegas. And I think between the three of us, uh, we're going to have some uh, good, uh, if, if uh, interesting, answers for you. So here we go. And keep those comments and show suggestions coming in, uh, positive, negative, uh, whatever you want to say, uh, check in with us. Also on the blog, uh, John and I uh, have, by, um, I'm going to try to um, uh, get Julia to maybe write something for us. Uh, John and I both write articles uh, regarding uh, what we've talked about on, on the pod, uh, Bay Door, and uh, uh, comment on those as well. But our first question, uh, Vegas Jam 36, what is it like to live in Las Vegas? Well, uh, it's, I have to say, in my opinion, it's one of the most unique places to live. I've always told individuals that ask me this, uh, it's, it, you have to learn to live here. Uh, it's, it's akin to New York. We pretend to be a lot of cities, uh, but mainly as far as the aggressiveness and, and the general energy, it's kind of New York. Would, uh, you, would you guys agree? Yes? Kind of New York. Well... I mean, Julia's been to New York. I've yeah, my yeah. sister lives in New York. Yeah. Um, and she doesn't have a car, and, you know, she takes the ferry to work every day, walks. So in that regard, um, it's not like it. But I don't know. I guess for me, um, I, you're right. You have to learn to live here. When yeah. I first moved here, I, I did the thing that I think most people think residents do, which is, um, you know, go crazy at the casinos and drink and party. And I, uh, in my youth, I dated a high roller for a year so that was kind of a whirlwind and 
now I have learned to live in Las Vegas and um, I never go to the strip anymore. I'm um, ha- living a normal life. So. How about you, John? What, what, what well, feeling do you I, get I know you before I moved here, I, I knew a guy who, who did live here for a long time. And he says, do you like to gamble? I said, no. He says, that's good. Because if you do, stay as far away from this place as you can get. Right. Because uh, it will wear you down. So um, the fact that, that the things that people do when they, when they do come here, whether they, whether they game, uh, you know, it's a tourist town. I, and I grew up in San Francisco. That was a tourist town. Uh, I lived in Monterey, which is a tourist town. So I've always kind of lived in tourist towns. And, and yeah, Julia's right. You just don't do the things that the tourists do, which is, you know, I go to this uh, strip only when I have to. Yeah. Um, there are, of course, neighborhood casinos. Yeah, I go in there, I go to the movie theater or something, but it's just, you know, the, the casino is just, just, just a road, you know, it's just a, uh, a obstacle on the way to the theater. Right. You know, there, so. There's that old joke, you know, b- that people ask the question, do we, <laughs> do we live on the strip? Uh, I've actually had the question, you know, from, from different individuals. Uh, uh, not, of course not. However, Julia just reminded me that, you know, for, for a lengthy period of time, she did live on the strip. She, she, uh, uh, w- was at the Sands Hotel and one of the coolest hotels out there, like she said. But, uh, living in Las Vegas, you, you're basically 20 minutes away from anything. I mean, we're, we're a very compact city. Um, you know, even, uh, even a, a township called Summerlin here, which nobody likes to go out to, uh, is not that far. But the Strip is a, is a very small place, so uh, it does pervade everything that we do. I mean, it, it's um, uh, holidays are different. Working on holidays is different. Uh, they're, they're really, I can't say that there's any, if you're in the industry, uh, there's no weekends per se. Uh, every day is the same. Uh, and of course, there's the, the specter of gambling, uh, you know, and, ha- and potentially having trouble. I've never had that trouble. Uh, every nickel is painful to me. So now, do you guys gamble at all anymore? Do you, do you like holiday visitors? Do you gamble with family that comes in? No, I never gamble. Whenever I put a twenty in, I just think of what I had to do to get that twenty, and I just can't do it. Sometimes right. I'll do mega bucks just right. for the hell of it, but no, I don't gamble. How about you? No, nope, don't, not at all. Just just no. walk right by it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the unique things in Las Vegas that we have, and uh, uh, it's we have, and it's, it's a holiday tradition. In fact, we just passed it. Hope everybody had a good uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Um, uh, my my uh, family comes in, and they want to do one thing and one thing only, all day, every day during the Thanksgiving holiday. Bingo. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> do you, now, do you guys, bingo in Las Vegas is, um, now with all the Indian casinos, people really kind of have, have an idea exactly what bingo is um, a, in a casino environment, but bingo here in Las Vegas is is truly something to experience. Um, it is, uh, it's, it's, it's as slow as you think it is. It is an hour, it's an hour of just sitting there looking at it, and, uh, and nowadays they have uh, computer terminals that you don't do anything. You, have no, you don't daub anymore. Uh, you can choose to do the dauber with the pink and the green and the blue, uh, but you don't have to. But uh, it's, a f- it's a sea of the elderly yes. and oxygen tanks and, and free donuts and free diet sodas, and it, it, but it actually, it's a kick. Have you guys been? Uh, God, the last time I did... The last time I went, there were only daubers. That was it. So wow, I've never cool. seen the new electronic ones, but it's fun. I had fun. Yeah. But it, it was a lot of smoking. Yeah. yeah. A lot of elderly people, including my grandmother. She would she would escape. She um, told us all that she didn't smoke. Mm-hmm. And then she would go to bingo behind my grandfather's back. Oh, That's nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, now they, they sort of half-assed try to separate smoking and non-smoking, but it's one big room, so yeah. so they yeah, they try that. But the the, the terminals now they're called uh, teddies, I think, uh, and they're they're they look like the size of a tablet, and everything is a wireless connection to uh, the bingo uh, caller and the ball section, and you 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 buy car you buy they're called bingo cards as they are nor- are normally, but you buy them and it, they load them into your little computer, and you sit down, you put in your code. And it, it logs you in, and you play. And, you, and it, f- for example, my family, it was like $25. You, you pay 25 bucks. It loads it up with a whole bunch of cards. In our case, we, we chose Rainbow. 
um, uh, which are different levels of winning. Uh, and, then, and then the only thing is, is that then you sit there. You, you literally don't do anything. You sit there and, which is good and bad, you sit there and don't do anything and you're bored, but then if you were dobbing, you could miss what's going on. Mm -hmm. Like, a, like f there are still people that, can, that that have four or five cards and they're dobbing and everything. But this one will let you know. It lets you know when you're one away, and then it then it plays a "We're in the Money" uh, song when you win. So huh. yeah, I'll have to check it out. No, it's it's fun. It's I, fun. We we go to the South Point, which is not the the best house in town, but um, uh, it's very much a locals place. But it's it, it is it, it's hysterical. Mm, yeah. But almost all of the local places, you know, you go in, there's always somebody with an oxygen tank. And if anything wants to turn you off to that, getting into it is, is just seeing that, that there's always somebody there with an oxygen tank. Looks, they look mummified yes. sitting there in the chair. And you realize, wow, you know, that person's probably only like 65, but they look 80 or 90. Right. And it's just, a, it's just, you know, it just that, that, that environment, environment, they go there all the time. Well. Do you guys remember... Um, people would wet themselves Yes, at the Venetian. Mm -hmm. They would be sitting there so long, they would literally yes. yeah. have they, an accident yeah. Yeah. and yeah, still sit there yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. in oh, it. Yeah. And still Absolutely. keep playing. They don't want to give up the machine. No, right. they're obsessed. And they, they yeah. would do that. They would sit there with, the, like John said, with the oxygen tanks uh, while smoking. They would actually yeah. be smoking with the oxygen tank, with oh, the connection sure. to them, oh, oh, yeah. 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 which is, is so safe. Right, um, yeah. Oh yeah, and I, the dealer friends that I have and uh, and everybody that I know, I mean, they they talk about w people sitting there too long wetting themselves, uh, uh, going underneath the table, you know, going to the side of the table. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, and, yeah, and, and all the local it's places. Terrible. You go to, you go to, to uh, Green Valley Ranch, and they've got all these. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Sunset Station, and they got all the posters of people. I won a thousand dollars, and it shows them holding the money up, and you look at them, and there's these women with with dyed hair and guys with bad teeth and you look at them and say oh at what price did you you know did that thousand dollars yeah and how much did you have to did, how much did you lose to win that thousand yeah. yes exactly exactly now we're talking about all the bad stuff and of course it happens and it contributes to the the sort of seedy nature that that las vegas uh, uh has always dealt with but it, she deals with it just fine but uh there are good parts about it too um, you know, having relatives in Phoenix, uh, I know that a town like that rolls up the streets at nine o'clock. So there's, uh, you know, you go there and there's nothing to the stores are closed. Grocery stores are closed. Gas stations are closed. You know, everything is just rolls up and you, you pretty much got to wait till next day. Las Vegas is great about that. I mean, there, we are truly a 24 hour town. Our, our, Wal our Walmart is 24 hours. Yep. Uh, but um, the good things about it are, are y there's there's so much to do. Gambling is a little tiny bit of what there is to do, and it's strangely getting smaller. We're going to talk about the millennial influence a little bit later. Um, and Las Vegas gaming is having a tremendous problem trying to remarket itself towards the new generations. But uh, uh, now, do you guys? What's the last show you went to? Uh, Blue Man Group for me just a month ago. Blue Man Group. I took my mother, yeah. Okay. Yep. At uh, 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 Luxor. Is it, okay, Luxor. Yeah. So you're talking about a strip show, right? Not not like the um, not like a concert. Not a strip club, John. I yeah, know, I, mean, I, I, knew okay. I knew that. I knew that. We'll talk about that later. John. Not a metal concert. <laughs> not a metal concert. Okay. A Las Vegas production. <laughs> I guess it was it was La Rev at the, at oh, the win. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I saw that. Okay. What'd you I think saw. of that? It was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was good. I mean, it, it had one of those, you know, we get those local discounts. Mm -hmm. Now and then they run, you know, two for $99. Or yeah. Cirque du Soleil, like Lorev, Cirque. yes. Yep. Uh, yeah. It was, yeah. It was the same. Um, it was the same producer. Okay. Yeah. All I don't right. know if it was an official Cirque du Soleil. But yeah. I think that was the last one. Last one I went to was Ka at oh. the MGM. Right. Okay. Fantastic. I mean, uh, the, the, the hydraulic system that they used and the whole stage production was amazing. The show was... You know, like most Cirque du Soleil performances, it, it, you know, you come away, once the, the visuals leave you, you're like, uh, it's okay, it's okay. And, and that seems to be the reaction to most Cirque du Soleil. Mystere still being the most popular, I think. Yeah. People love that. But Ka is also the one, you know, kind of infamous where the, where the little acrobat um, uh, mistimed the large thing and fell and yeah. then she was unfortunately killed. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but MGM, uh, Julie and I in the pre-show were talking 
about our favorite hotel. She was listening to the podcast. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Yeah. Uh, I never uh, uh, and she was mentioning that her favorite place is the Sands because of its uh, old school nature. I mean, it's it's Rat Pack to the core, and it was, it it was such a fantastic place. Um, I mentioned that my least favorite was MGM because uh, MGM to me. Uh, kind of uh, like again like I told Julia is like a giant barn with slot machines it's just it is huge you know and and the Venetian though where we worked um, is deceptively huge you know we dealt with so many people that uh, uh, especially I, I've mentioned you know where their room keys went bad and they had to come down and they would first yell at us and then you know we would send them to the front desk to deal with that but uh, John what are you what's your least favorite as a consumer, not as, as a, a worker. Consumer. Well, you know, the MGM might be up there as well, just because yeah. you're right of the size, and if you don't know where you're going, um, it can be frustrating. Right. It can be, it can be big. So I, I would put that one near the top. Okay, the top. good. And yeah. I think the MGM, I agree, but I feel like I know you said on a previous podcast that Steve Lynn is kind of credited for bringing the corporate environment. Yes. But MGM, for me, mm-hmm. ruined it. I, they have, so what do they own now? New York, New York. New York, New York. Yeah. Um, Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo. Um, Do they own Paris? It, no, Paris is, uh, is uh, Harris Caesars. Harris yeah. Caesars. I yeah. just feel like when they came in, like I feel like Steve Wynn still had oh, that. Man- Manly Bay, too? Do they own that? Yes. Yeah. But I feel like Steve Wynn, yeah, he did, but he also had, he brought an element of class. I still think he expected, you know. Right. Um, I, I just feel like MGM, it's like people are just herded around. It's like the yeah. herds. Yeah, MGM is still powerful. I mean, uh, uh, Kirk Kerkorian, who has now passed away, yeah. was the person that sort of ushered that in with his battle with Steve Wynn. Yep. Um, I think Kerkorian actually ultimately won uh, because of uh, Steve's eye affliction. He just couldn't keep in the game. But yep. um, no, I mean, it's man, uh, MGM Grand. Oh, and the Bellagio, too. Bel- Bellagio, Bellagio, MGM Grand, Mandalay Bay, Bellagio. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so on, and even the small ones. Uh, they're still the largest, I think. Uh, Harris, and Harris Caesars is snapping them up, uh, you know, the little ones as, as we speak, probably. But um, what is, for you guys, um, again, you know, Vegas Jam 36, what's it like to live here? Is it different than, I always use the <laughs> a reference of Connecticut, is it different than living in Connecticut? Uh, my answer is an emphatic yes. But 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 what's different for you guys? What was the what was the thing that you had to learn to live in Las Vegas? Or did you? Mm-hmm. Was it was it just a is it just another city with a weird, you know, two mile strip? Or or is it some place where where people they they need to be instructed how to how to live here? Well, John, you've lived in many countries. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th- the thing that I think th- it stands out to me is that is that Las Vegas exploded in terms of growth, probably in the last twenty years. So it's a very the, the and it was master planned. Mm-hmm. So we talked about Summerlin and, and where I live in Henderson. Uh, the streets tend to be tend compared to other places where I live, they're wider. Um, there's you know they have a lot of trees, um, a lot of parks, which make it really nice for day to day living. Um, it's it it does have that modern suburban feel and now there isn't a lot of history then to that to that to those aspects you can find the older places when you drive out there you see wow these places are really old you know the single story houses i think it's interesting that so many of the houses that they do build still have like a formal dining room and there really is i don't think a sense of family here almost everybody i know moved here from somewhere else Mm -hmm. so it's not like they've been here a really long time so they don't really have those family gatherings like you might expect if right you know uh, you know expect where, where people are from i know like my neighbors are from ohio so you know they usually go back to ohio or they have people come out here but generally speaking you know they're on their own right now do you do you th- now we've all worked in the industry julia like we said being the longest now julia when when you worked in you started at what age um so i started at the sands i was a freshman at UNLV, so I must have been um, probably just turned 18. Yeah. 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 I was in the buffet, and I actually lived. My father relocated here when I when I was much younger than that from Tampa to accept a position at the Sands, and he lived in the casino for a year. Wow. So um, I would come and visit often, and mm-hmm. we I, we actually lived at the Sands Hotel in a penthouse. So it, um, I had the unique perspective of actually living inside a casino. 
and I don't know, it was great. I, it definitely takes a, a certain person to be able to do that. My father never gambled, never drank. Yeah. Like he was yeah. not, he would never succumb to the vices, but, um, I did when I came out here for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, now uh, a freshman at UNLV running yep. rebels. They won last night. Yes. Oh yeah. They uh, great snacks. job. They're, they're yep. strong this year. Yes. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, th- I think that's probably the largest problem. Adults, you know, w- without the, uh, uh, the proclivity to, to you know ruin their life with gambling can usually deal with it it's the i think it's the the college students because we have a large college here it's it, you know it's very it's a sponsored uh collegiate uh, town and and uh just like julia said you know when you get here it, it, it's a party town you know i mean there, there there's lo- there's money to lose and naked chicks to see and alcohol to drink and you put them all together and you end up uh, spending all your uh, your book money Yep. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, moving on, uh, Creek Values said, "Is the cost of living high in Las Vegas?" Um, it, it it is and it isn't. Um, I would consider this. I mentioned a hundred dollar gallon of milk, and I've referenced this before. And then our 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 lovely grocery stores, Vons, Smiths, Albertsons. All of them. They have a little pod of slot machines, and there's always a, a 400-year-old lady there working there that's you know that's smoking as well. But uh, uh, you can go for a bottle of milk or a gallon of milk and end up losing 100 bucks. That's what that means. Uh, so that's a very unique part of Vegas. Also in the airports so that we've mentioned as well. But uh, uh, s- a couple statistics I found were very interesting. We're 119th in the world out of 340. Uh, for cost of living. So low as far as the world is concerned. We're 51st out of 101 in North America. So Canada uh, obviously is representing pretty heavily. And 44th out of 89 in the United States of America. So right about in the middle. Right Hmm. in the middle. Uh, Now living here, back to the milk. I have a milk problem, John. Hmm. Uh, Back to the milk. uh, We have two dairies, and I don't know why I'm spending $3.50 a gallon of milk. Now, we've all talked about we're getting rid of milk, all of us, I think, yeah. uh, you know, we're kind of the dairy is out. But um, uh, I don't know. Is the cost of living high? Do you guys feel, you know, uh, Julia has experience in the mortgage industry, and, and, and we, we're all homeowners, right, yeah. here, in the, yep. uh, here in the panel. Um, not comparatively, I, I know. I mean, no. we're right next to California, and that's crushingly expensive. Oh, it's terrible. And whenever I have friends come here from New Jersey, where I'm from, yeah. they walk in my house and they're just wide-eyed. They right. can't even believe I live there because they've purchased a home with half the square footage yeah. and double the price. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's, you know, we're pretty yeah. lucky. I, uh, whenever I travel, um, you know, I love to travel and all that, but mm-hmm. I do love to come home. I, I do like living here. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Yeah. I do too. It's, it's, it's become a hub for me. You don't have to... Yeah. You can go to L.A. With not ha- and not have to be there. You can yep. go to New York and not have to be there. Um, uh, we have no state taxes. That's taken care of by the gaming uh, uh, industry. Uh, so there's a lot of pluses to be here. Um, and, and obviously from those numbers, we're, we're, we're right in the middle. I, I was very yep. surprised by that. Um, you know, there are a few things that are expensive. Uh, our car insurance is the highest in the country. Um, and thanks to young ladies like like Julia. No, <laughs> the the uh, the uh, uh, we're high because uh, they. I, I looked this up. We're high because of the number of accidents per vehicle, and women are higher than men for accidents. I don't know. Yeah, the driving here is isn't the most pleasant. And so no. when I lived here and I had to work at the Venetian, I hated that the commute. I, I had know. to make it. It didn't matter. It did, you know, I I thought well, I'll work the night shift where we work mm-hmm. you know four to midnight. Well, oh, midnight, no one's going to be on the road. No, everybody else is getting off of work, too. And because there's no alcohol law, per se, they never close the bars, right. there's always a somebody drunk driving. Always. Always. It doesn't matter. It could be 10 o'clock in the morning. It could be 10 o'clock at night. There's just right. going to be somebody loaded. Uh, so that is the fact that I can work from home, my office is in San Francisco. Now, my colleagues, seeing what they pay for rent, and for they get you know half the size of what I have for like two to three times the price. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, wow, this is great. I get the best of, you know, I, could, uh, I wouldn't trade that. Yeah. No. Now, one thing I saw on the news, and it's not on the pre-show, guys, but uh, uh, one thing I saw that was very interesting, uh, that when my relatives are here, they asked me if this is a sanctuary city. 
I looked it up, and it's actually the, it has been requested uh, that we be a sanctuary city. But unfortunately, I think it's going to um, the sanctuary city. The the general rule is that you have to uh, cooperate and provide all data and information to the federal authorities, and that's a that's a kind of a huge problem. But the larger issue, which is why I don't think we're going to be a sanctuary city, uh, is um, uh, we are also a target city. We uh, then they don't they they feel that uh, you can't have both. You can't be on the list for you know ISIS and their uh, you know their wrath and and be a sanctuary city as well. So I, uh, when I was looking up the um, cost of living, that actually popped up. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that because uh, I, I ju- in my travels, Rome is a global sanctuary city, mm-hmm. and uh, it's uh, it feels as such. It's it's kind of scary out there. So I don't know. Now now, do you guys uh, miss in your last? Uh, foray into the hotel industry. Do you miss it? Do, do you do you miss working at the Venetian with me and John? <sighs> um, p- honestly, parts of me miss it. Yeah. I know that's a weird thing to say. Here's what I don't miss: the customers, yeah. which is stupid to say because that's the whole reason we were there. Sure. But I, um, working with the public is a difficult thing to do. I'm sure there are many people listening in other industries who would agree. Um, but I do. I did enjoy just the feeling of. Um, you know, being there, driving into work, kind of working in a, not a desk job. And Mm -hmm. now I have a a desk job. I leaned over a computer for 11 hours a day. And, you know, I'm there at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And um, I don't know, back then it just felt like life was more fun. Yeah. But we, we did struggle with the consumer. Yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> That's probably what brought us closer together. Too. Oh, I'm just sure. The fact that we, you know, even with with people outside our department, yeah. was just that we all had to deal with this. Yeah. And people, uh, it, so it's so funny to me looking at these, you know, allegations in the news about people their misconduct. I thought well, we dealt with it all the time. And it, just that these weren't f- necessarily famous people. The whole, you know, what happens here stays here. Kind of gave them carte blanche to, okay, hey, you, hey, I can go there and be an asshole. And I just hope, said, gee, I hope these people aren't like this when they go home. Yeah. Are they are they an asshole full time, or is it just you yes. know part time asshole all time? And you know, and then it's just like oh, I got it. We got to deal with them, and the next one comes up. Are you the person I complain to? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. <laughs> Am I the person who shot. cares? No. Yeah. Who, no. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> no there's nothing I can do about it. There's right. absolutely nothing I can do about it. But go ahead if it makes you feel better. Right. Tell me about the toenail you found under the bed, or oh, yeah. well, lots of toenails. Lots I think of toenails. We we I I got a toenail thing. Did you? Yeah, I got a toenail thing. I got a. Uh, I, I, I talked about a couple of the awful things. I got the bloody pillow. You yeah. got the yeah. bloody yeah. pillow. I've yeah. had several condoms found in Condom. strange places. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know what was even worse? It seemed to me was that not only. I mean, it was bad enough that the that the that the guests or the customers treated us, uh, you know, like riffraff. But but so did the hotel. I mean, they had the cameras on us. They weren't really watching the guests. They weren't afraid that they were going to steal anything. Yeah. They were afraid we were going to steal something. Yeah. And then, you know, I got interrogated by that asshole from security that time. Yes. You know, he calls me in and he gives me this ring. Where were you on Monday? And I think, what do you mean? Today's Friday. Okay, Monday, Monday. Okay, yeah, yeah I know. Where. And he had me go over my whole day from like when I woke up at noon because I worked a night shift. And then I came here and I think, where the hell is he going with this? I think I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. And all yeah. of a sudden he gets up and then you're <laughs> at the desk and, and then he says, did you look at a? We have this, yes. Yeah, did you look at this porn site? And I looked at it, and I, I remembered what had happened. Is your boyfriend at the time? His name was, I think, Mike. Yeah. Yes, he had called and said, "Hey, check out this site." And it was like an innocuous name. It was like, yeah. you know, Bob's Vacation or something. And back in those days, before you went in the porn site, there was a splash screen, right? Yeah. You were about to enter a pornographic, and you said to me, he "Goes, oh, Mike gave me the 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 address of a porn site." So I turned over and I looked at the screen, and I saw the splash screen, and you just closed out of it. Well, yeah. You know, they had it in security. They had a record of that URL, or they had a record of that um, of the address. So they came down, and of course, they assumed it was me that looked at it. And that's why the, you know, they were saying, well, we have it on. <laughs> yes, but I wasn't going to cough you up. <laughs> and, I thought, and I just said, no, I don't know anything about that. Well, you know, she's, and what he said was, you know, looking at the porn site, you won't be fired for that. But if you lie that you didn't look at it, you will be. So I see. I said, no, I didn't look at the porn site. Well, now, I had a similar situation, which which actually uh, almost, uh, I left you guys almost way earlier, yeah. is a guy came up, and, you know, we were in, st- we, we had 12 some odd weeks of training, which is nowhere near enough, 
um, uh, best time of my life as far as my professional career. But um, after that, you know, we were told the customer is always right. You make sure you take care of them. Go go above and beyond all the tag phrases of the of the day. Well, okay, we had that drilled into our head. Fine. Well, this guy came up and he wanted a a a dancer, a a, a visit to his room by 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 someone who would take their clothes off. And um, okay, so I opened up the phone book and flipped it to the that particular section, which it's there in the in the yellow pages uh, the, when they still had yellow pages. And I gave it to the guy, and that was the end of it. Well, the next thing I know, I got suspended. Uh, the, the, they came and got me, and, and this and that. And, and from apparently, what happened was uh, the guy, the, he, he chose poorly. Uh, for all you Indiana Jones fans out there. Uh, he, he chose one. The, the dancer went up there. He wanted more. Apparently, he got more. And she rolled him. Uh, and, and took all his money, yep. and so on and so forth. So he came down and wanted the hotel to compensate him. No. Well, if it was man-to-man dealing with that, that that's never going to happen. You're an idiot. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't. It was the corporate environment. So so I get hauled in front of this goofy tribunal, have no idea what's going on, had to deal with the same guy that you dealt oh, with, dick. this little know. squidgy uh, yeah. security expert who, I, who came, to found, uh, came to find out that a lot like the eyes, uh, he'd done time, and that's why he was the security expert, because he knows you know, how to do all the bad things. Well, you know, uh, I'm sitting there, and I still have no idea what's going on. And uh, and we had some people that, w- the panel will know the names. We had uh, Nicole and Lola and that weird Brazilian chick, that Lisa. Yep. Um, and uh, so I'm sitting there, and they're saying, this is what happened. And I said, well, I, it w- wasn't, you know, it wasn't me. And then, then they started describing the situation, and I was like, well, yes, that was me, but it was also the Yellow Pages. It's, it's his problem. So, but at, uh, a long story short, what John was talking about, we had no support. No. no. You know, I was immediately raked across the crow- coals, and I was inches away from leaving. I don't know if you guys, do you guys remember I this? Do. I remember, remember that. that. Yeah. I remember I do. waiting for you to come out of there. It was like you were yeah. coming out of surgery. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and then uh, there was a day where they had to think about it. I had to go back in and talk to these people. And, of course, the, the, uh, they found in my favor because it was just nonsense. But um, th- that happens a lot, especially now. You know, I'm, I won't bring up the current atmosphere, but uh, th- I'm sure there are so many more little um, private meetings and tribunals. And, and but, sure. but that's the bad part about working in Las Vegas to, to me, and, I, and I'm sure for my panel mates here, um, you have no support. Yeah, do you remember you what they used to no call support. it when you got suspended? <laughs> well, they called it a career decision career day. Decision oh, yeah. day. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, and I got one of those because I, I had the bank, right? I mean, we, we sold the show tickets, right? Yeah. So, so I was responsible for the money that day. And we were $100 short. And we eventually found it. But yeah. I had to report we were $100 short. Yeah. And then, anyhow, Nicole came to me and goes, gee, I'm really sorry. But, you know, the, the this hotel rules are if it's anything more than $99, it's a career decision day. Yeah. Oh, geez, really? So if Barf. I would have put a dollar of my own money in there, it would have been okay. But the thing was, is that he goes, yes, yeah, so you're going to have to take Saturday off. I said, well, had I asked for Saturday off, you never would have given it to me. So maybe I need to lose yeah. and then find $100 more often. So I sat home and drank beer. Yeah. And having my career decision date, like, do I really want to work here? No. Yes, <laughs> that's my decision. <laughs> that's my decision. Well, and the Fuck Venetian you. also was, uh, they jumped both feet into the group dynamic situation, same as the career decision day, the, the euphemistic ways of saying that you're in trouble. Well, because they didn't want the, the, the lawsuits, the litigious society that we live in, they didn't yep. want the lawsuits, so, and they were all afraid to go one-on-one, you know, which I'm sure would make my dad just roll over in heaven. Um, they, they were afraid to fire people. So if you, do you guys remember the point system? I do. And I actually got, oh, <laughs> they, yes, they, I they r- uh, talked to me about, the, they talked to the group about the point system. And I'm a r- relatively irreverent person. And later on, after the meeting, discussing the point system, I said, well, how many points do I get if I win? And, 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 and I got a point for saying that. Oh, my oh, yes. goodness. Oh, yes. I don't remember how points were allocated. It was being late. Late. But what else? Um, uh, well, it, it was it was uh, having uh, any sort of negative interaction with the guests that would uh, oh I'm going to use a term escalate oh uh, an escalation yes yeah. we didn't use that back then though escalation came around and in, in in within the last five years no it was a guest challenge yeah a guest challenge yeah um, yeah and and um, what what else was it it was uh, being late. Um, 
Oh my gosh, there 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 was a, a laundry list of things. It was just nonsense because they were afraid to fire you because they they you know if you fired Julia, you fired me because I'm a woman. You know, they fired John, they fired him because he's old. He was old. Yeah, oh, it's <laughs> worse these days. I'll yeah. tell you that. I'm yeah. a I'm a manager. You know, and it's John, worse. John, you know, John. We think John stole a hundred dollars. Fire him. Yeah. You know. Well, it was actually Julia paying for the porn site. Yeah. You know. That's right. <laughs> well, so you know what happened, and then so I just said, "No," because well, we have it on video. Well, I know you have it on video, so good, fine, go yeah. look at the video. Yeah. Well, nobody looked at looked at a porn site, so I finally got out of that grilling, and I, I went up to you. I said, "They're gonna you're gonna go in next, and this is what they're gonna talk about." Yeah. And and Julia told me you walked in there and you just told the guy, said, "Oh yeah, I was the one who <laughs> looked at," it. and I didn't look at anything, and then the guy was like, "Oh okay," and that was the end of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, so. and it's. Uh, 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 if people, one of the, uh, many, many questions come in about, you know, are we actually under, under cameras at all times? Yes, you are. Oh, yes. Uh, the only place you're not, and there's probably secret ones that we didn't know about, is the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Any bathrooms. Bathrooms in rooms, bathrooms in, in, in common areas. No bathrooms. Uh, but everywhere else, we, you are under constant scrutiny. And, and the eyes or, or security surveillance, uh, they are absolutely watching. And uh, the Venetian didn't really have catwalks, like, for, for example, the horseshoe. Um, uh, but uh, they had uh, trained individuals that were both IT and, uh, uh, and trained in surveillance. But, they, you know, it's absolutely true that they have surveillance people for gaming areas that are, are, uh, have uh, backgrounds in, in cheating and stealing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, they're great guys. They know exactly what they're doing. They're very helpful for the casino gaming area. But we were absolutely, they were, they were at our desk, all of our desks, there were the minimum of three cameras mm-hmm. on us. Yeah. You know, and I don't even know how wide the ones for the front desk. So, yes, you're all, now the world is, on, you know, on, on camera right now. But, uh, yeah, we were, now, now um, this one, we're going to lean heavily on, on Julia on this one. Um, I think this is, oh, what is that? I'm Skin MD West. Oh, no. Same. Oh, stuck, stuck in Midwest. Oh, stuck good. Stuck in the Midwest. Midwest. Right. Okay. Ha ha. Uh, well, stuck in Midwest. Sorry. <laughs> Skin uh, MD. Are you, are the clubs as good as they look on TV? And, uh, my notes are getting in bottle service, VIB host and, and music. Um, are they as good as they look on TV? That's a tough question. They look great on TV. Uh, they look, you know, when, when, you know, a CSI is there or, 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 or any one of the, well, every movie ends up in Vegas. So every movie you see, Hangover, um, it lo- makes it look really cool. There's a lot of goofy things that happen uh, that don't happen, uh, like um, the, uh, the suds that, where they shoot the, uh, the, uh, the suds all over. They don't do that anymore. They no. did that for like one New Year's Eve. But are they as good? Now, Julia, you used to be, were you a, you were a host for gaming or were you, um, or were you a host for clubs? No, I was a VIP services agent at the Rio. All right. And then, um, from there I went up into player development, okay. which is in the, um, VIP. So I did you know, we would have to welcome guests. We'd go to the airport, yes. and welcome the high rollers, and all that. But right. um, I, I think they used to be great. Um, I remember Club Rio was great. Light mm-hmm. Studio Fifty Four. Studio Fifty Four yeah. was great. Yeah. Um, I loved Light at Bellagio. Mm-hmm. Um, even Babies, remember that? <laughs> oh, Babies, yeah. That wasn't bad. No. But um, I don't know. It, lately, it's. Uh, I wouldn't like it now. I think it, you know, takes you 45 minutes to get a drink and yeah. it's just packed in and I don't know. I, I don't think I would enjoy it as much. It's the bottle service thing wasn't a really big deal back when I went to clubs and now you're nobody if you don't have a booth and a, a yeah. bottle service and, yeah. and it's, it's too, it's there's, not fun. There's really no premium alcohol. There wasn't back then and there isn't today. There's really no premium alcohol flowing. I mean, Grey Goose is not premium. No. You know, Belvedere is not premium. Uh, kettle one, you know, that's everybody's favorite kettle one. Uh, they're not really premium. So it's, it's not a, it's not that special. Um, and, uh, like Julia said, uh, I, I made arrangements in our club, C2K and, and all the other clubs. Um, th- yeah, they, they were much better back then. 54 was always my favorite, but, uh, um, nowadays I'm there for a different reason. I'm there, you know, and I see the club pre-opening. Which is good and bad, you know. That you see that that uh, all clubs are not quite as clean as they seem when you when you walk in and see all the all the lasers and the lights and the DJ. 
but um, uh, I don't think so. I, I think the the TV does does them justice. Mm-hmm. Um, and Julie is absolutely right. Uh, and I remember, you know, John and I many a night, you know, trying to get people in and trying to reach uh, club hosts, and and it, it's just it was a nightmare. Uh, and it, we were powerless. We were there was nothing we could do about getting people in. I mean, you could. I had a couple of doormen that would help me out, but then doormen became uh, passe. I, they, they. I, I don't even. I, I don't even know of a club now that really has doormen. Really? Not really. Uh, I mean, they have. Not not that that not that could help you. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they're, they're mainly because they're so security conscious. But that's the fun of it. I know, wasn't it? That, it was that great. That was the fun, and yeah. trying to get people in, trying to get to the front of the line. Yeah. Those are the good good times. Yeah. I, I don't think I would have as much fun with, you know, Marquee. Yeah. And what, I don't even know. That's the only one I know of right now. Oh, Hakkasan, oh, Marquee. Hakkasan. Yeah. I tried to go to Hakkasan once. Yeah. It was maybe five years ago. My husband was an architect on that team, and it was awful. I stayed 20 minutes and walked out. Mm-hmm. What are you supposed to do? Just stand there? No, You can't talk. The music's so loud. You can't get a drink. Right. It wasn't that fun, unless I'm just old. No, I don't think so. Uh, well, yes, you are, but <laughs> but uh, no, I don't think so. I, I think it's the same experience for a young person. Um, I think the experience is probably uh, far more exciting for maybe first time, second time visitors, especially when they when they they get past everything, and they're able to um, uh, get in for the first time. It it is it is quite fun when you finally get in and uh and as long as you don't you get completely hammered you can have a great time uh, especially if you you know do a new year's or you do a special event and you get to see the you know calvin harris steve aoki uh dead mouse and all the other guys but uh um it, it's it's a problem and of course the the what has always remained the same is that girls are it's far easier for girls oh, you yeah. know you got four four plus girls you're gonna get treated way better than for little swinging swords, you yeah. Know? And uh, that that'll ever change. That's the same in all clubs. Yeah, I didn't have problems getting women in. No, I don't think anything. I said, don't even ask me, man. I said, unless you're, I get women in, but I can't get I, guys. Are we, we're you know dime a dozen, so yeah. But we're special, John. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, that 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 moves me to to uh, a tougher question, and uh, this one is right at Julia. Is it hard? Was it hard then, and is it hard now to be a woman in Las Vegas? And is it harder than any other city that you've experienced? No. No. Not to me. I never had trouble. You know the current atmosphere. Again, we're, I'm not going to belabor that again. But yep. but um, you know it's it's a tough one. It's a tough atmosphere, and uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, and and uh, I I never. I, I didn't hear about any male female problems, not really, when I was working there, and I wor- you know I was there six plus years. Um, you had mentioned that you had one issue, you I know, a, a, wi- a long time ago, yeah. when you were you know much younger, and and that was not a big deal. No. Um, see, but John and I aren't able to answer that question, you know, about women yeah. being, uh, you know. Now, is it is it hard to be single here? Yes. Yes. So it, it it still is. It still is. Okay. Why so? Um, I think that hand in hand with being a party town, mm-hmm. um, people come and go. Is people that it? come yeah. and go. It's transient, and then um, people don't really settle into careers as much here. I feel like it takes them a little bit longer. I think they eventually do. Like all three of us found our niches after we left yeah. the casino business, but. Um, I don't know. It's when you and when you haven't settled on a career, then you're less of a family person, I think. And I don't know. It just, it, I did have trouble here. Mm-hmm. I, I had to meet someone. You know, you can't meet someone in a casino and a or a club. Yeah, You've a lot of people to, come here to reinvent themselves. Yeah. Maybe they're running from something. They tend to have baggage. Then you find out later, and it's just like, well, you know, is that somebody I really want to yeah, spend a lot of time with? I think that's it's yeah. that's very issue. difficult. To but you know, related to this also, I, I used to get like, how can you raise a kid in in Las Vegas? And I thought, well, you know, I did. I mean, um, my son was, you know, Gio was was born in Las Vegas, and then and then we left. Well, we came back. He was in the fourth grade. Um, and you know, no, there there aren't stripper poles on on every street corner nope. or or bars or things like that. Otherwise, it just like any other place, you choose there's good schools and there's bad ones. Um, be, because I work in education, I knew which were the good ones. I, and, and, you know, I made sure he, he, he went to those. So I, I don't see a problem raising kids. Um, 
here in Las Vegas. Again, it's going to depend on where you're at. You're going to find, um, you know, good parts of town and bad. Las Vegas also has, if you look on crime statistics, it has a high crime rate. But that's even skewed because they all, what they do is they, they count how many crimes per capita. Well, they don't count the tourists because they don't live here. Um, so they'll say that you know Las Vegas has what you know a million people whatever and then there's so many crimes therefore it's really high mm -hmm. but since a lot of those crimes happen on the strip to people who don't actually live here it inflates the crime rate yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, uh, now now I'll move from that to how Las Vegas is changing I, I agree I don't think it's um, uh, it is a it, it's challenging to live here sometimes especially if you're in the industry but when like Julia said if you're out of the industry, uh, it's just a normal town. You just have a, a like a two mile piece of weirdness, and uh, you know, and you avoid it like the plague. You know, and, and unfortunately, when family comes in, you you, you got to go to the strip. You got to do this. You got to do that. Um, uh, now, N NY guy seventy five wrote: uh, Is Las Vegas catering to millennial and be beyond? Um, I, I read an article regarding this, and uh, you know we're old school. I mean, we're 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 uh, I'm I'm Gen Julie and I are Gen X. Mm -hmm. John, you're baby. Oh, I'm baby boomer. But you're a boomer. You're the yeah. ass end of baby boomer. Okay, yeah. and so so we're the forgotten. Well, you're you're you used to have all the money. Boomers used yeah. to, and that's that's it where they boomed. yeah, yeah. When that's where they calculated the market. Yeah. Gen X was quickly forgotten. We're sort of the forgotten generation. Millennials now are the ones that, that have discretionary funds, sort of. And see, the, 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 the problem with Vegas is Vegas will always survive, but Vegas is slow to do things as it regards the changing uh, of the guard generation. And uh, the, I was reading this article, and they said there are f uh, f uh, three things that Vegas is trying to do to alter the way... Uh, that it presents itself to millennials only, or Gen Y, as the case may be. They're redesigning the space. Now, we're used to it. You walk into a hotel, you walk into a casino, beautiful facade. Looks like, you know, for, for us, it was the Venetian, it was the Doge Palace, Campanile Tower, uh, St. Mark's Square, and so on. Um, millennials don't care. Th and uh, we all know when you walk into a, uh, c to a casino, there are slot banks, they're straight, they're round, uh, there, there, th then there's the crafts tables, there's the main gaming, and it all kind of looks the same. Well, apparently that's not attractive to millennials. Millennials want an entire uh, sensory experience. They, they, want to, they want sound, they want smells, they want a redesign of the structure, uh, or they keep on going. They have very little money, and they, they make their decisions based on uh, uh, numerous but unknown factors. And uh, they don't like complexity. And so, And Vegas can't seem to do that, especially in the gaming area. And they're wanting something that I find very interesting. And I wanted to get your guys' opinion on this. Um, we've all gambled at one point or the other and had a good time or a bad time, depending. Uh, they want interactive multiplayer cooperative gaming. Meaning, I know, right? That's a mouthful. <laughs> um, meaning that, uh, for example, uh, John and, and, and Julie and I would go to a table uh, and, and they, they want the ones with the, with the robo uh, dealers. They want the hot chick throwing the cards on the computer screen. And they want what you do, Julia, and what you do, John, and what I do to all work together for our mutual benefit which is 180 degrees away from what Las Vegas is. Las Vegas is, here's my $5, I would like to double my $5, and you either double it or lose it. And it's you. But they want the group of millennials, all their little hipster pants and hats and beards, they want to, to c together to make money for the group. Now, do you think that is even possible? Mm. No. No. Mm -mm. What do you think, John? They want, they, they want, commu basically what they want is on a food level, they want communal tables. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, unless they, unless they, 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 they would be okay with that if, if we put down $15. Yeah. Because they say, well, that's $5 a piece. Right. Right. They'll think of something like that. Right. Because if there's one thing the town does well is does it will completely, and it has, you know, it, it has no uh, a sense of, uh, you know, of the past, right? I mean, they tore down the, the sands. I know. And they had the, uh, the, uh, uh, was it the Copa Room? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they yeah, don't know where it was at. You know, yeah. well, where was it? I don't know. They, they used to say at the Venetian they were going to put up a plaque. It was here, but nobody knew where it was at. They, they, they don't care. They, they mm-hmm. you know, they don't have, a, I, I, I hate to say sentimentality, but, but they don't have any of that. They're like, you know, they want to cherish the past. It's like, we'll reinvent it. We'll tear it down. We'll just build something new that will make money. So, that you know, it went from gaming. Remember, they went into the family bit. Fortunately, that died out. It went back to gaming and then into the restaurants. Yeah. When I first, first time Suffered I came to Las Vegas was 1980 when I was 21. And they're really, I mean, the restaurants were shit. I mean, they had the, the, the buffets and things. Everybody was gambling. Nobody ate anything. Yeah. You know, and they were drunk anyway, so... But then, you know, then it became that they brought in the restaurants. But then people started thinking, and I think that was the experience that we found. One of the reasons why people were so annoyed is that they had the old Vegas in mind where things were really cheap. Yeah. They give everything away. And then they would come here and they found out they don't, they don't give anything away anymore. Because know? people used to come here and gamble. So yeah. they were really paying for it. I, yeah. I feel like we were one of the last groups. I kind of feel like um, we had the last of that really good experience and we yeah. saw it die out. I mean, when I first started in the industry, I did things they would never be allowed now. I remember um, when I worked in player development, this high roller um, wanted to take the casino host I worked for, myself and another woman, um, to California for the weekend on his private jet. We all went. They took us in a limousine to the private airfield, took a jet, partied all weekend, came back. They would never allow that now. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, those were fun. It was fun back then. I remember I had a blast. It was, it was, you know, I can't call it dangerous, but it was, it was what you think Las Vegas is. Going back to the question, uh, is it as good as it looks on TV? That, that was as good. She, she, Julia just described exactly what happened so often, Yep. you know, and uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. Now, the third, third thing that they say that Las Vegas is is not keeping up with the times that group that wants a redesigned little little gambling lounge they want to all gamble together and mutually benefit and they want real time interactive social media connectivity with everything that they do they want them mach- every win f- so like i said $5 give me my $5 they want $5 win tweet Facebook, Instagram, and and then give the five dollars. The, so they want everything involved in this. They want everybody to know what's going on and how they did it and why and who's with them. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah. Now, an interesting thing again that 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 I remembered in this article is that along with gaming, which is having a hard time dealing with this because there's a lot like you like you said wouldn't be allowed. There's a lot of stuff that's not allowed. You know, especially this tweeting thing. I don't even know how they would make a machine do that uh, correctly, but because it could get hacked at that point. But um, uh, one thing, along with gaming, millennials are passing by to get to the uh, uh, Momofuku or whatever restaurant they go to. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they are not going to strip clubs, and why? Why are they not going? To, because they don't have any money. But why? Because they have no money. Yeah, I don't know why. It's why? inappropriate. Now it's inappropriate. Strip to clubs, go to a strip club? Yes. Uh, Julia and John and I existed in a time where strip clubs were, were kind of shows. I mean, it was, it was the good ones were, right. were nice and interesting. And then all three of us progressed in a time where it was not, not great that a woman went in there and then suddenly it was okay. Couples were great. You know, yeah. women were great. Uh, you didn't have to have an escort anymore. You just went in and enjoyed the strip club. Now... You know, and then and then uh, and then that progressed to women enjoying the strip club dancers. Mm-hmm. Usually, you could go in and watch, have fun, but and then the girls wouldn't dance for women. Yeah, right. right. And then it progressed to the dancing for women. Um, now it's inappropriate. Strip clubs are dying. They're they're I didn't literally know that. dying because they they uh, everybody's embarrassed and it's inappropriate and objectifying women. I don't know. Well, the, the OGs have guys too. Right? OG had guys. Oh, yeah. they had guys. Yeah. They did. Not anymore. Well, OG's gone, isn't it? Yeah, it's gone. It's yeah, gone. gone. Yeah, yeah, they closed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, our VIP passes are, are, are dead. They're yeah. dead. Oh. <laughs> uh, Julia, what do you think? Um, do you think Las Vegas should be still the place where strip clubs exist? Yes. You do? I like my Vegas a little bit seedier. I do, too. I do. Yeah. I think that's it's supposed to be the adult playground. That's what it's supposed to be. That's what it was meant to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's just everything's so homogenized now, and right. everything's just like everything else, and... We have to be able to, like you said, tweet it and Facebook it. 
Uh, it just the mystique is gone. And I find that so interesting that that literally the t- the, the social connectivity that they're asking for is 180 degrees. It's polarized from what happens here stays here. I just yeah. find that really interesting. That that now they want everybody to know, but they they what they wa- they've whitewashed it, mm-hmm. and and after that. Now they want you to know. It's like, well, yeah, I ate here and I, and I played five dollars and nothing bad happened. Tweet. Yeah. You know. As you're right. Any, as if anybody yeah. really wants to know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so often I see those. You know, I've got uh, Facebook and I, I almost never post anything. But someone else say, oh, you know, I'm at IHOP. Good for you. No, why? Why Fantastic. are you letting everybody know? You know. And Facebook. Oh, like I know people on Facebook and they they post you know something they're doing to make themselves look good. Right. It's like if your life does not even remotely resemble what you're making it out to be. Mm-hmm. You know, you're doing this to make people think a certain thing about you. It's not even true. I just think it just takes the mystique out of Vegas for sure. I do too. I do too. The only thing I can say, and, and this is uh, all the way back to the first question, what is it like to live in Las Vegas? Truly what it's like to live in Las Vegas is to see something, uh, see a town it will change with whatever times is required of it and then it'll snap back it'll go back to the beginning to zero and then see what happens it'll be here when we're all gone it'll be here when the millennials are gone and uh it's a learning town where uh, it'll never i don't think it'll ever die it'll never you know you'll never see the tumbleweeds rolling through and you know all the typical zombie movies they love to destroy vegas it'll never happen uh, you know, and um, I, it, I still find it to be an extremely safe town. I think what's the, the recent happenings, I think that was an, an anomaly. Um, we've, we've been on the terrorist list forever since we had yep. terrorists. Um, and, uh, but it's a great town, and, uh, and I think Julia's right. Uh, I, I don't like it now. Yeah. I, I, it's turned into something we, you know, the panel here, uh, don't like. Uh, I think well, Julia hit it right in the head. There, there is no mystique anymore, it, and and therefore I think it's not fun. You know, it doesn't. You know, we're the one place where it should be over the top. It should be. Yeah. It really should yeah. be. I've had some amazing times here. It was, yeah. gr- you know, when I was. There's no better place to party. I got yeah. my party out. That's right. I mean, it was fun. Julia was wild, John. I can't imagine. She, she <laughs> was. I mean, look at her now. She's a beautiful woman, obviously <laughs> a corporate, uh, and she was wild. She, Back she then. rarely had clothes on. <laughs> well, <laughs> I did Well, it does get hot here. That's something else. People have to get used to the heat of the summer. I was scantily clad. That's good. Now, I'll bring up a couple of, of, of uh, 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 controversial topics. I just, sure. you know, just some quick answers. Um, uh, we've talked about the big one, uh, you know, the, the strip clubs. That was, that was huge to me. I thought that was great. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think of the industry now of mar- of the of marijuana? What do you do wha- now? That's new to us. Mm-hmm. We, we you know yeah. I, I got asked for weed every every once in a while at, at yeah. the desk, um, and I was just it was some lamo, and I just uh, I said ask a cab driver, and they knew. Um, and you still ask a cab driver because the dispensaries are too expensive. But yeah. um, what do you think of the industry in Las Vegas? Because it's here. It, it's not coming. It's here. Yeah, it's here. Yeah. Well, um, about positive, negative? I'm kind of... Is it here to stay? Indifferent to positive. So I, I just think that, um, you know, the whole legalization of marijuana thing, I think it does push out the criminal element mm-hmm. because, um, you know, people go to a reputable place and buy it and, you know, they don't have to... I don't know. I think that part is good. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't really care much about marijuana. I have to be honest. Yeah. Um, what about you, John? Well, I haven't go been to a dispensary yet. I, I probably go sometime once once I've once been. things kind of die down. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I've known a lot of drunks. I've known a lot of stoners in my life. Um, I prefer to hang out with stoners, mm-hmm. just because I, <laughs> I know some people when they get drunk they can get violent. I've not known anybody, st- any of my people that I know who are stoners that get violent. I mean, they just kind of lay there and you know, mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. pass the potato chips. You know, <laughs> 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 let's watch let's watch old Monty Python shows, uh, yeah. kind of like we did back in the seventies. Um, so yeah, I, I don't I don't have an issue with that, um, and yeah, it does take the. And if you ask most m- most most police agencies, they'll say the same thing. Mm-hmm. They would rather you know they don't really you know come on, it's pretty minor. I'd rather so. them focus on you know yeah. important things. Let's let's focus on murders and and rapes and conspiracy. Let's not worry about the guy smoking a 
joint. Yeah, yeah, they're not really bothering it. No. no. Okay. Uh, what do you guys think? Now, we haven't talked about this in a long time, but we've, we've taken a few more steps forward. And again, it's here. Uh, it's, th they're coming. What do you guys think about the Raiders? You think it's a good thing for the town, a bad thing for the town? You know, I'm kind of excited. I'm seeing hockey now. I'm yeah. seeing, um, you know, football coming. Mm -hmm. And I heard that we're getting soccer. We're getting a MLS a team. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. MLS, so it's like a lower division. It's a lower. Oh, is it yeah. like a farm yeah. division? Okay. Yeah, I guess. All right. So, yeah. I don't have a problem with it. I'm not a football fan. I right. don't watch on Sundays. I never will. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thankful my husband does because he can go watch and then I can write. And it gives yeah. me some <laughs> privacy. Yeah, right. <laughs> so um, he cares more about it than I do, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I don't, I don't know about the Raiders. I feel like um, that crowd might be a little bit rougher. I don't, I don't know, but it is. Is it? It's my team. I, lo I love the Raiders. I always you have. Do. I didn't want them to come here, but it's a rough yeah. crowd. It but is. They're, a they're rough supposed crowd. to be rough. Raiders represented that. You know, they they were Oakland across the board, and I feel sorry for the Bay Area. I th they they they're sad. They're they're so mad at the Raiders right now. Well, it's now. twice now that they've left. So yeah. I mean, I should tell you about that organization. And and as it, the day will come, maybe 20, 30 years from now, when their lease is up, that they're going to be looking for. Hey, I'll ditch Las Vegas in a second if I can get a better deal somewhere. Yeah. So they have that history. Um, and yeah, and I'm from the Bay Area. I don't want. Uh, they should stay in Oakland. You know. Um, you know, you say that that the hockey team here. I think that was fine. But it was an expansion team. The MGM owned and paid for the 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 uh, T-Mobile. They have a lot of events that go on besides hockey, and they yeah. play, what, 40 games a season. They're a little more than that, 40, 41 games, I think. There's an 82-game hockey season. Right. Um, but the Raiders are, you know, the, what, 10 <laughs> games and a big stadium, yeah. and you're not going to get too many events in a big football stadium, unlike yeah. T-Mobile. You know, they're not very – you know, Metallica went on a, on a uh, stadium tour this year. They skipped Las Vegas. It really wasn't a place for them to play. But other than that, you know, it's going to sit empty for most of That's the time. That's true. And – it's going to still have upkeep and and because you know when the when the 49ers played a candlestick i worked at candlestick i hawked beer and i remember just in two weeks how 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 shabby the place got just in between home games you know and then uh, of course they had the giants though they had they had a baseball team but the thing that gets me now is a hockey team uh is the price of the tickets you know i was looking at yeah, i think i'll go to a game because you can't watch them on local tv here they're not on the the uh, the channels that i get so i can't watch them so I said, oh, I, I'm a Sharks fan, so I'll maybe win the Sharks play. Well, to get to the seats in the upper deck, like, mm -hmm. like on the top, which you really don't want to see a hockey game up there, they're $125 each. Whew. If you want to get down closer to the, to the lower area, they're $325. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get on the glass, they're looking at about $650. Wow. For that's, that's single game. That's a single game. That's, <laughs> that's not, not like a, a season at all. Yes, that's, <laughs> and that's, that's during the regular season. Yeah. It's not like seventh game of the Stanley Cup. I thought six fifty. I thought, geez, I got VIP tickets at Lost Rages, which was two days, not two hours. Right. And you know, I paid a lot less than that for those. Yeah. So yeah, that's a little pricey. Yeah. That's a bit pricey. All right. Last question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, put you guys on the spot. What is cr gone in Las Vegas that you wish would return? Gone that I wish would return. Yeah, something you enjoyed or something in the past that you never never saw but you wish it would come back so you can experience it. What is no longer in Las Vegas and you wish would come back? Oh, I think the showgirl shows. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you too? The mob rules. I mean, yeah. uh, yes. you know, I had a friend who was a, he was a uh, bellman at the Riv uh, in the 60s and he retired, I think, in 2000. And he was even complaining at that time about the corporatization of it. Mm -hmm. And it's, of course, gotten a lot worse. And he said he made more money as a bellman in 1965 than he did in 1995. Uh, he said, you know, when the mob ran it, uh, they, all they cared about was the casino. If you had your own little side scams or whatever it was, you're running stuff, fine, go ahead, make as much money as you can. They didn't nickel and dime you and, 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 and want a cut of everything you did. They only cared about the casino. So he said it, things were so much better back then. And well, I think that's what people wanted. That's when they come here. That's what they're really disappointed at. They took it out on us. The mm -hmm. fact that, what do, you mean, you, what do you mean nothing's free here or the buffet's yeah. thirty nine ninety five at that time and it's gone up $10? Right. What, what happened to the dollar ninety five? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's dead But do you think that happened because the public changed, like the visitor, the demographic that came here changed? Because when you think about it, they had no money to game. So what? Well, how, we're not going to give you anything for free if you're not gaming. 
Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you're right. I, I think the uh, the the um, discretionary funds that people had uh, slowly went away for one reason or another. Crashes here and there. Uh, but uh, we lost we lost the loss leader items mm -hmm. and never got them back. The buffet being one of them, obviously. Yeah. Well, yeah. we experienced this. Remember, we were we were doing all right. Yeah. We had those commissions, and then they yeah. they took what ninety percent. Yeah, and we right. still did okay. We that was our okay. biggest source of we income. We did okay, like but I mean, what mm -hmm. was wrong? Honestly, in the grand scheme of things, gaming makes so much money. Was was it really important to have our two hundred thousand dollars that was split between forty people, yeah. or you know what I mean? You know, it's it's. Why do they do that? <laughs> why why do they have to keep doing that? They're doing it to Still valet doing. Oh, now. Yeah. Um, they're doing it to Bellman. Yeah. I mean, it's. I understand that's all changed. I just yeah. don't think it's. Well, we've talked about it earlier. Concierge. Yeah. Uh, there, there's no more specialness to it. Mm -mm. it. It's literally just a place to buy tickets. You know, and uh, now they're hiring, they're outsourcing. You know, concierge now are outsourced ticket sales people, uh, sort of like Ticketmaster, not Ticketmaster, right. but some, some just like that. So, yeah, yeah. So I agree with you. Uh, I'll add also that I never saw them, but my mother and father came to Vegas um, during the time of the Rat Pack. Mm -hmm. And to talk about Lost Leader, you can go see Frank and Sammy and Dean for free in the lounge. You didn't even have to get get in the lounge. You just sit down, and there they were. Yeah. You know, and like you said, at the sands, and it, it was it, it's, it was an amazing place. I I I never saw it. I, w I wish I could somehow see it. I see you know you see it on uh, rare videos, you know. But uh, yeah. I think that would have been great. Uh, I can't even imagine what's coming for Vegas. That's another thing that I miss is the maitre d seating. Oh yeah. Oh You know, yeah. where yeah. you know, hey, you, it's between you and the maitre d. Well, it depends on how. Where do you want to sit? There's no not a bad seat in the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get right up there in the front there. You give the guy a 20. Yeah. You have to give the guy a 20. And with the ruffled tuxedo shirt. Yes. Yeah. And I miss, I told you this earlier, I miss yeah. the coins. I miss the sound. Ching, yeah. ching, yeah. ching, 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 yeah. That's I, what I, I always, knew. I always knew as a kid, when somebody came back and gave me silver dollar or, ha or 50 cent piece, mm -hmm. that they'd been to either Reno or Las Vegas. Yeah. Because that was it. That's what went in the slot machines. And they would right. save their coins to go, to go gamble. It was kind of a, it was a fun thing to do. Right, you know? right. Well, I have a couple of Area 52 things I thought were pretty cool uh, in keeping. One of the questions I had is, what is the population of Vegas? Um, as of third quarter of 2016, we have 632,912 people. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Uh, honestly, I thought it was more. I thought it was, it was over I think, a million. I think they count the valley. As, yeah. You know, like Henderson is uh, 300,000, I yes. think, now. So yeah. you include that in North So that Las does Vegas. not include so Henderson, Township of Summerlin, North Las Vegas. That oh. doesn't include. So, I mean, uh, we're probably thinking of that. Yeah. But six, uh, uh, 632,000, uh, almost 633. Now, the, the interesting one I thought of uh, to talk about, or not talk about, but here, uh, the original lion yep. that was in front of the MGM Grand, it was sort of an Art Deco style. They, they, it was a lion whose mouth was open. And you would walk through his mouth to get into the casino right off Las Vegas Boulevard. Well, there were two. Re it was taken down as in Las Vegas terms almost immediately. Uh, it, it was taking up. The first reason was it was taking up really prime real estate for for more gaming machines. Uh, and that's always the thought process. But more importantly, uh, it was uh, found to be in many of the Asian cultures tremendously bad luck to walk into a line or be in, in exposed to a line in that way. Uh, and therefore, they, they redesigned it, truly redesigned it, and then uh, had a statue commissioned of an entire full lion that now is out front. And there's a lot of people that don't know that. Oh, yeah. I remember that original yeah, deal. Yeah. 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 It was goofy looking. I mean, it was, it, it was, was strange. It was bad. Yeah. It was, it was poorly done, but... Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of little little tidbits about Vegas that I'm finding that I'm remembering after all those years. Now, how many years were you at the Venetian? Julia. Oh, man. Hold on. I have to count them. I think I was there in 90. Hold on. 99 is when they opened. 99. Yeah. yeah. I think I was. You were there six months after. I was yeah. there in 99. Yeah. Yep. You were yeah but it was after the, the opening. End, yeah. The end of 99. And I quit in 2003. Okay. So what is that? Four, Four years. years. John. I think I was there three because I, I finally had enough in 2002. That's when I went back to grad school. So I was here three years. 
But don't you guys remember? Don't Same you sometimes longer. miss? I mean, we had some good times. Think oh, of us did. standing up there yeah. at ten o'clock at night, tapping yeah. on all the guests, it just <laughs> absolutely making fun of everyone. Yeah. Yeah. They would, people would walk up, they walk away, and be like, Fuh. "Yeah." yeah. <laughs> and I remember one time, and I, I, I said, "You were there, Julia," and you looked at me, goes, "That lady just farted." And I said, how do you know? Because she had a dress on and she was talking to somebody and she grabs the hem of it and starts waving it yeah, back Yeah, she and did. Forth. Yeah. So I said, oh, I, I just learned something. I never thought of that because I've never worn a dress. Do you remember Anna Nicole Smith? Yes. Was that yes. you or is that you, Jamie, when she came out of the restaurant? It was when the desk was on the other side. Yeah. The better place, in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> and uh, she came out of the restroom and she had smeared her lipstick like this. And she was falling drunk, put her hand on the desk, falling on the desk. I remember the story. I can't remember if I was there for it. I you don't, don't remember? I was there for that one. Some, I yeah. didn't remember. She was a wreck from the beginning. Oh, man. Yeah. Poor thing. That lipstick was just boom, bright <laughs> red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, I remember once when we had, our, we had our telecom in the back of the front desk. And I go in there and then... And then Jamie said, really, just kind of, you know, he just said, uh, be careful when you go out not to trip over the Muslim woman praying. And I thought, what? <laughs> and I opened the door because I was going out. And sure enough, there was one right in front of the women's room. Uh -huh. yeah. She had set down her prayer mat and was, was praying, I guess. So, you know, you, you, we would get that often. Well, what, what time is sundown? Mm -hmm. for, and then you can't really tell when you're in the hotel. So yeah. I guess she figured, oh, shit. Right here. I got to do it right here. At which way, is, you know, which direction is Mecca? I guess it's that way. And it was less like... I almost took the light. Yeah, I swung. I opened the door, and she was like, we just didn't move. And okay, well, yeah. you were right. Yeah, and then uh, at the end of my tenure, so to speak, of the Venetian, they had a, they they built a, pr a prayer room. Cause oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they okay. finally did. They finally did. Nowhere near the bathroom, thankfully. But uh, well, guys, thank you for being here, John. Uh, always a pleasure seeing you, Julia. You too. Thanks. Um, now, Julia, of course, is our is our uh, resident author, mm -hmm. and uh, you can find her works um, every day on my phone. Apparently, <laughs> my Amazon app is locked onto Julia's book <laughs> uh, and uh, Woven Realms. Now, Julia, uh, t uh, go ahead and plug everything you want to plug. What, sure. what do you got? Um, so Woven Realms, Woven Quests, and Barren Waters, and then I'll have my, I think I'm going to do a Twitter polling of my new cover design, mm -hmm. um, in about five weeks. I just, I'm thinking it'll be five weeks. Okay. Um, it'll be a book called Carved in Stone. And, um, so I'm going to, um, take all of the designer submissions, narrow it down to maybe like my top five to seven put it publicly for uh, um, Twitter to decide on and I'll send it to family and friends. Okay. And um, so anyway, check it out. Barren Waters is definitely for me, my bestseller, not a bestseller <laughs> for me, my bestseller, <laughs> but um, so hopefully you guys will check it out. And listeners can find you uh, all of this information at uh, uh, Julia Shoop. Dot com. Dot com. That's S H U P E, Julius mm -hmm. dot com. Yep. Uh, but again, thank you guys for being here. Uh, for us, you can find us at thepodbaydoor.com, uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, uh, uh, Google Play, all of the major uh, podcasting apps. And please check in with us on our, our WordPress site where uh, you can see follow up articles and all the clickable and downloadable links uh, for everything we talked about, especially for the Vegas shows. And you can find that at thepodbaydoor.wordpress.com or hit the big W at thepodbaydoor.com and check in with us on our YouTube channel as well. It's the Pod Bay Door uh, podcast at YouTube and you can see uh, all of the panelists uh, when they uh, visit here. Uh, appreciate it and we will see you next Tuesday. Thanks to everyone listening and watching. You can catch the Pod Bay Door on the Podbean app or any of your favorite podcast apps including iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, and Stitcher Radio. You can watch the show on our YouTube channel at the Pod Bay Door Podcast. Please download, like, and subscribe. Our social connectivity screen is coming up. Check in with us on Facebook, Twitter, and WordPress. The Pod Bay Door is closed and talent is out. Hey everybody, thank you very much for tuning into the show. We would love to hear your show suggestions and comments. If you're watching on our YouTube channel, please click to subscribe. You can also connect with us on Facebook using at 
TPBD Podcast, on Twitter using at TPBD Podcast, and on WordPress at thepodbaydoor.wordpress.com.